Welcome back to the Sunny Stampin' Studio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this cute treat box. As you can see, I have some lint chocolates packaged inside. Why don't we get started? First thing you're going to need is the Biggs XL Fancy Favor box. Now, you're gonna to need to cut this in your big shot. So you're gonna start with the big cutting plate, the long shim pad, then you're gonna put down your Fancy Favor box die, and a piece of 6 by 12 real red cardstock. And then lastly, you're going to put your um, crease mat on top. And then you're going to take this whole sandwich and you're going to run it through your big shot. Now, once you've done that, you're going to end up with a box that looks like this. So what you want to do is you want to create mountain folds on all the straight lines of the box and you're going to use your bone folder for this. You're going to fold up the bottom and then here on the side you can see there's a v-shaped score. Now you want this score line to go into the opposite direction of the side score lines. So I'm just going to flip this like this so that I'm looking at the inside of the box and I'm going to very carefully press up along this score line like this. And then as you can see as, as I do this gently, the cardstock will fold along these lines. So you want to do that for both sides. Now once you've done that, this is what your cardstock piece is going to look like. So before I go ahead and assemble the box, it's going to be stuck with the side flap is going to stick to the inside of the side panel. Now you'll notice that this side flap overlaps this angled portion. I want to get rid of that because if I stick it down like that, what's going to happen is that this piece here, this corner, is going to prevent this from folding inwards the way it should if I want to happen to pinch the bag closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my box down. I'm going to lay this small flap on top of this angled flap and I'm going to make a little pencil mark where the peak of the angle is and then I'm just going to draw a line and bring that back into the corner like that. So then what I want to do is to take my paper snips and cut off that corner. Once you've done that, you can grab your sticky strip. Now this is also known as red liner tape and you want to put some on the outside of that small flap. Like so. So, I'm now going to take the edge of my paper snips and peel off the red backing of the sticky strip. So now what I want to do is I want to stick this little side flap to the side of the box. Now as I'm doing this, I'm carefully holding it apart with my fingers. As you can see, in this hand I have my finger in between, and on this hand I'm using my thumb and my fingers just to hold the box apart. This is going to allow me to position the side flap without actually sticking it down because with sticky strip once you stick it down it's hard to get apart. So once you have it placed you're going to stick the two sides together and your box is now going to look like so. So now what I want to do is stick down the bottom. So I'm going to place these two rectangular flaps on the inside and as you can see I've already gone ahead and put a little bit of sticky strip. It's about a half inch piece and it's towards the end of the flap. You have to be very careful you don't extend the sticky strip all the way down the side of this, this flap because if you do that when you fold down the other flaps which are angled you'll actually see some of the sticky strip. So I've now peeled off the red backing. I'm holding my box so that it's square and then I'm going to fold down one side flap like this and then just so that it sticks, I'm going to flip my box over here for a second, just push down. And as you can see on this other side flap, I put a little bit of red liner tape here so that it's going to stick to these pieces and then this piece is going to stick to this flap. So you can now go ahead and close that and then flip your box right side up and then just put your hands in there and press down to make sure it sticks. So you've now got the framework of your box and as you can see you can now pinch it closed easily. So let's set that aside for a moment and we're going to grab 
our designer paper. This is from the Sending Love Specialty Designer Paper Collection in the Occasions Mini Catalog. And I'm going to put snail adhesive along the top and bottom edges, and then I'm going to center and stick this onto a piece of Pretty in Pink cardstock. Now my designer paper is two inches by three and one eighths of an inch, and my Pretty in Pink cardstock is um, two and a quarter inches high by three and one eighths of an inch. So now you've done that, you can just set that aside for one moment. I'm going to need to die cut out an embossed heart. Now this uses Stampin' Up's Embosslet Scalloped Heart of Hearts die. And the sandwich you're gonna use for this for your Big Shot is different. You're going to take your multi-purpose platform. You can see over here there's two tabs, tab one, tab two. You wanna flip this open so you're gonna be on tab one. You're then going to place a cutting pad. You're going to take your embosslet. You're gonna open it up, place a piece of cardstock in, close it, sit it on the cutting mat, and then stick the other cutting plate on top, and then you're gonna run this through your Big Shot. And that's how you're gonna end up with this embossed heart. So now that I have that, what I want to do is add a little bit of real red sponging around the outer edges. And to do this, I'm just using a wedge of stamping sponge and my Real Red Classic ink. So I can now go ahead and stick this down to my designer paper. And I'm just going to angle this a little bit. I'm now going to take this friend stamp from the heart of, from the I Heart Hearts Clear Mount Stamp Collection, and I've stuck it to Stampin' Up's Clear Acrylic Block C. So what I want to do is I want to ink this up really well on my Pretty in Pink Classic Ink pad. So once I'm sure that my stamp is well inked, and there we go, oh, there's a fluff sticking on there. So once I know that that's well inked, I'm now gonna take my Real Red ink again, and this time I'm gonna take a sponge dauber. And I just want to dab my sponge dauber onto my Real Red ink pad, and then I want to use it to just ink up the very outer edges of my stamp. Now this is a more controlled version of the rock and roll technique. With the rock and roll, I would be taking my stamp that's been inked and pretty in pink and rocking it um, on my ink pad. But this way I can make sure that the red that I pick up is a little bit more controlled. So once I've done that, I'm going to huff on it. So I'm just gonna breathe on it to re-moisten the ink and then stamp onto a piece of very vanilla scrap cardstock. You now want to cut out your heart and you want to leave a small border of very vanilla around it. Once you've done that, you can take a Stampin' Dimensional, put it on the back, and then stick that onto your Pretty in Pink cardstock piece on an angle. Now as a final little touch, I'm gonna to take this button, and this is from the Designer Button Sherbet Collection, or Sorbet, however you pronounce that, and I'm, I've threaded it with a sliver of cardstock, and I'm now sticking it onto my designer paper, right onto the heart. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of sticky strip on the back of this piece so that I can stick it to the box. And the reason I'm using sticky strip is because if I'm gonna be pinching the box closed, then there's gonna be some strain on this cardstock and I don't wanna chance it pulling away from the box. So I'm now gonna position this onto the front of my box. Like so. And that's all there is to it. You're done your box and then you can just fill it with whatever treat you want, leave it open or if you'd like pinch it closed and maybe seal it with a little um, decorative paper clip. Well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to stamping with you again.